As I mentioned in the introduction to the Dynamic Systems and Controls Lab, uh, one of our goals in this course is to introduce some concepts from measurement and instrumentation. And uh, in this lecture, I'll, I want to do that as well as uh, give you some concepts that might help you as you begin to learn about using uh, LabVIEW to control the acquisition, and in particular the use of the uh, instrument that we're going to use, which is called the MyDAC, um, and uh, we'll talk more about that uh, after we discuss the idea of measurement system in, in more general terms. So uh, measurement in, in, in engineering, you know, can you usually think of it as, 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 um, as building systems that try to extract information from a physical system and a concept that you might be familiar with. And uh, I have this little diagram here, I'll blow up a little bit. And um, you know, if you think of some physical system here, uh, the measurement system in general, right, is exchanging power. We, we, we need to usually draw power to our measurement system so that we can then draw out some outputs that we can use either just to learn something about the system or to control the system. Um, one of the terms that you might find in measurement science is, is the term referent, which refers to some attribute of the system that uh, is relevant. So for example, in systems concepts, you learn about state variables. So you might have a referent that's specifically a state variable. But there can be other types of reference that you're interested. A measurement, a measurand, sorry, sometimes is a term used to refer to any referent that is also measurable. So, so you might have a bunch of reference, but not all of them are measurable. Down here at the bottom, uh, I just show a little sketch of uh, the sensor system, as we looked at before, it takes in a measurand, and it's some true value. Remember, a measurement, a sensor system sometimes needs power, not always. Some sensors run without power. Uh, they're self-generating, say. And then you get a transduced signal. Note I'm using power bonds in general here. Uh, you know, we use bond graphs in uh, dynamic systems and controls lectures. So I'm just showing that, you know, there's power flowing through these systems, not, uh, as opposed to uh, arrows that, um, sorry, this arrow here is full arrow, meaning that's just information. There's no power flow. So anyway, if you go back to the sensor system, it, it, it does generate a transduced signal, usually in the form of a voltage, but not always. And then this also is, goes into some signal conditioning, also might need some power. Uh, it could be an amplifier, for example, and that needs power in order to then generate the signal out. Okay, so the sense, the, the measurement system itself might have as a component of it this sensor system, right? So measurement systems can... Uh, have various components in, integrated together, including sensors, to provide this output. When you start looking around at different types of sensors that you might use in different applications, think about the fact that some of the signals that are generated for many of these electromechanical sensors that you might use, um, all of them convert some kind of physical quantity into an electrical form, and again, that could that could mean it's either a parameter, for example, we talked about resistance and capacitance and inductance, um, and sometimes that's done in a, in a, in a direct way. Uh, so, for example, you might have a sensor that generates a voltage based on a pressure. Uh, in, in general, however, that, that information about the physical quantity can be encoded in a lot of different ways and maybe it, go, it could go through different processes, and I'll show that uh, what you what I mean by that in a second. Keep in mind also that, that there's different ways that you might find this physical signals encoded in electrical quantities. Uh, and uh, sometimes they're in analog form. So if you have, say, a voltage that varies with pressure, so the pressure goes up, voltage goes up, and it takes... It, and it's an analog form, so you it, it, you know what I mean by that. It, it, it has a continuous variation, say, over time. Uh, you can also encode physical quantities in time. So sometimes we will make measurements of time quantities. For example, periods uh, become important. So you might infer some, say, speed from 
a, um, a speed sensor that is encoded through the period of, uh, of a signal. And it might be, a, for example, a square wave. And the way you detect speed is by measuring the period. So that's a time quantity. And sometimes there's digital forms that are also um, uh, used to encode physical quantities say in binary form uh, and or different types of digital forms so most of the sensors that we use in this course just because of their ease of measurement as analog say voltage quantities uh, will be analog form but uh, if you look at other sensors for example encoders that are very simple sensors yet uh, they require their they're in digital form and also we usually or extracting time-based information from them. So they keep that in mind whenever you're looking at, at sensors for different applications um, in the future. So the different types of electrical domains can be used in certain ways. I, I like this example um, of, a, um, of, of how you can think about different quantities encoded in different forms, different signals. And, uh, you know, you can think of, of being able to quantify in, as I mentioned, analog, in time form, or in digital form. As you can see, the analog, in analog domains, you know, you might be looking at currents, voltages, charges, and so on. Time domain signals and digital domains might, might be signals where we're interested in measuring frequencies, pulse widths, or, or even phase between signals. And, and when we're looking at signals that are, say, of digital form, uh, sometimes you're counting, you're, you're say counting pulses that occur. Uh, you're counting. Uh, you might have serial or parallel type signals that represent numbers. Right. So a lot of sensors that you might see out there uh, have uh, encoded the physical quantity that they measure in in many of these different forms. Okay. Let's take a look at an example of this. Here's how a, a digital thermometer system might be built. So as you can see, you might have a couple of thermistors here in, in, in what's called a bridge circuit. So when these thermistors did, you know, change because of temperature, you get, you get a voltage, as you can see here, that's generated. This battery, for example, is just powering this bridge circuit. And so you get a voltage change. So you can have a system in this measurement system that a circuit that converts that voltage into frequency. That frequency then goes into a gate circuit with some clock oscillator running it so that all it's doing is generating counts. And then at the end of the day, that counter sends a parallel signal so that it just displays, say, a number. So a lot of measurement systems are built this way. As you can see, it's not just a voltage signal in analog form that might be of interest. Because of the way this system is built, for whatever purpose, it goes through many different forms. And this diagram up here, which was shown on the previous page, shows you how you're converting from, say, okay, you're starting off physically taking temperature. Temperature changes resistance, and they indicate that, oh, I'm changing now into a resistive domain. Resistance now, I get a voltage from that. So that's kind of the signal conditioning circuit gives you voltage. We could stop there if all we had was an analog to digital converter and we were just measuring voltage directly and then we could calibrate that, right? In this case, this is going to be output into, say, encoded form into an LCD display. So it goes through several different forms then where it's converted into frequency and then into a clock before it goes into some kind of a number that's then displayed, okay? For most of the applications in this course, we are going to stop, you know. One other note about a system like this is that it represents sort of a finished system where you might build this in a microprocessor. And alternatively, you know, computer-based data acquisition, you know, using something like LabVIEW um, really allows you to sort of prototype systems like this, which is one of the values of learning how to use LabVIEW because you can build an instrument, system, an instrumentation system like this, prototype it in LabVIEW, uh, and either deploy it that way or uh, figure out how you want it to work before you ever take it to uh, hardware in this form.